Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet part one of the Brick Row Shawl. This pattern is being released as a free crochet along on MooglyBlog.com in September of 2022. So this pattern and the videos will be released in three parts. This is the first part. For links to the written pattern as well as the other videos as they're released, please go to the description or you can simply Google Moogly Blog Brick Row Shawl. To make this pattern, we'll be using a USJ six millimeter crochet hook. This one is an interchangeable twist and lock hook from Susan Bates. We're also using Karen Simply Soft Ogo in six different colorways. That means six different Ogos or six skeins. You can choose your colors, of course, mix and match, use whatever colors you like. You could even just use five of the same color or two of one color and three of the other. Definitely mix it up to your own taste. And if you've already got lots of Karen Simply Soft on the shelf, this can be a great stash buster as well. To make my brick row shawl, I used the blue mist and sand colorway, the soft pink and gold colorway, the cool green and lime frost, graphite and white, and finally pagoda and glacier. I also do recommend having a couple stitch markers available. Now, as you can see, this is a little bit big to show on our table here. So here are a few more pictures I took of the brick row shawl. As you can see, this is an asymmetrical shawl in a triangle shape. The measurements are 34 inches by 73 inches by 81 inches, and that 81 inches is on the increase side. We work this pattern starting at the smallest point and they get wider as we go. So if you decide to change the size of the shawl for your yarn amounts and your preferences, that is easy enough to do. Let's go ahead and take a look at the beginning of the brick row shawl. Here's a closer look at the beginning of the brick row shawl. You can see here, we start at the smallest point and gradually increase. We increase in every two rows out of three. You can also see that this effect is created with post stitches. These post stitches are always worked on the same side of the fabric. The back will be simple stripes. When you've worked a post stitch in front of a stitch, you then don't work into that stitch itself. Kind of the standard rules for post stitches. Another thing to note about this pattern is that it's one of my patterns that uses two active loops. This is sometimes called the poulade or pull up loop and drop technique. That means we'll have two active loops going, so it's a good idea to have your stitch markers so you can keep the one that you're not using at the time open while you're using the other one. You will not turn after every row either. That's another feature of poulade patterns. So as you're making this pattern, be sure to read each instruction carefully. This video will help you along, but the written pattern is going to be a great big help. So here you can see it gradually increases and then eventually, after we finish section one, which is definitely the longest section here, we move on to section two. That's where we introduce our new colorway and it continues to increase and so on. There's just a few different changes we have to make as we change colors. So let's go ahead and open up an Ogo and get started. So let's go ahead and open up our first Ogo. As I stated, I used five different colorways for mine and I used the blue mist and sand first. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using the strawberry and soft blue. There it is right there. Again, you can use whichever colors you want in whatever order you want. Now, if you see Karen Simply Soft Ogo in the store, it might come with a paper label around the top and around the bottom, or it might be this style. Either way, we start by removing the labels, and you can set those aside if you like to keep the information for later. Okay, once we've got the labels off, what we want to do is find where the two sides are connected. And it's a little harder to see on this one but you can see there's an end right here, so we know it's nearby. And I can actually feel that this right here is where the two parts are. And if I just give it a little gentle pull here, you can see that little plastic ring inside is starting to be revealed. So I wanna hold on to one end of that. I like to do the end with the little nub there. And then I can just go ahead and give that a little snip. Since I held onto that end, it's now easy enough to pull that right on out. And we're ready to begin. Now you'll need to decide which color you want to make color A, or rather A1, and which color you want to make color A2. We'll be switching back and forth. Again, it's totally up to you how you want to set up your color choices.
What you want to do with the Karen Simply Soft Ogo is work from the outside. So this strand right here is perfect. We're all set up to work from the blue, but we need to get to the pink. So let's go ahead and gently pull those apart. You can see here, if I could just give them a little tug and a twist here, the pink comes right on out super easily and we can find right where they're joined. You can see one of the great things about Karen Simply Soft Ogo is that if you do want to continuously crochet with one strand, you can do this. It does color change within the skein itself. However, for our purposes for this pattern, we're going to go ahead and just snip those right apart. Now we've got two outside pull ends that we can work from. I've decided to go ahead and make the blue color my A1. So that's the one we start with. We begin by making a magic circle. So I'm going to go in several inches from the end of my yarn, wrap it over my non-hook forefinger twice, insert my hook under both loops, pull the furthest back loop just under the other one, yarn over and pull through. This locks my magic circle together really well. From there, we want to make a chainless starting double crochet. So we're going to pull up to the height of a double crochet, secure the top of our loop with our finger, yarn over with the loop itself, Go right into the magic ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull through that loop and behind the yarn over, yarn over one more time. You can release that loop and pull on through. So that is a chainless starting double crochet. If you prefer, you can substitute a chain three or whatever double crochet substitute you like to use. After that, we simply need to double crochet in the ring And that is it for row one. So now we can go ahead and remove our finger and pull that ring closed. So after those two stitches, we're ready for row two. Now at the end of row one, the instructions do say to turn. So we go ahead and turn our work and we continue with our first color. We're going to start again with a chainless starting double crochet or again, a chain three, whichever you prefer. Simply going to work into that first stitch there there we go. And chainless starting double crochets certainly take a little more time than a chain three, but I really do like the way they look in the finished project. There we go. Now we're also going to double crochet in that first stitch. And then finally, we will double crochet in the last stitch. There should be two loops, even though it's a chainless starting double crochet to go under right there at the top. There we go. So at the end of row two, we have three stitches total, but it also says to pullad, P-U-L-A-D, pull up, loop, and drop. So literally, I'm going to pull up my loop, and after I've secured it with a stitch marker, I'm going to go ahead and let it drop. At the end of row two, we also turn, so I'm just going to turn my work like this and put it down while I get ready for row three. So for row three, we're going to bring in color A2, the second color from that first Ogo. And we're going to join to the first stitch with a standing double crochet. So what we want to do is find the end of our yarn, of course, hold on to that end there with our two non-hook fingers of our hook hand, yarn over twice, and then we simply insert our hook into that stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through that loop and behind the yarn over, yarn over and pull that through that loop and the other yarn over. Then we are going to double crochet in the next stitch. Go ahead and drop that tail. There we go. You can hold on to it if you want to. Sometimes my fingers just like to hold on to it. And then finally we work two double crochets in the last stitch. So as you may have noticed, all our increases are on this side that I'm working into now here, the side of our project. Oops, I pulled up a little strand of our other color. Let's not do that. I wanna take our time and get through that nice and cleanly there. There we go. So we work off one double crochet and two double crochets. Now, as I just said, this is our increase side. So if you'd like to, you can go ahead and just put a little stitch marker, there we go, on this side of your fabric. Then you'll always know, you know, if you have to put it down and come back to it, this is your increase side this side is going to be worked even and straight. At the end of row three, we again pull up, loop, and drop. So we're done with this color. 
for the moment. Put a stitch marker in that one and it will hold it nice and secure. At the end of row three, after we pull up the loop and drop, we also do not turn. So we've got our other loop waiting for us on this side. So we're going to end up working back that same direction for row four. To begin row four, we'll go ahead and take this stitch marker out of that active loop and we can just reinsert our hook right in there. Just pull down on that tail end there until it's nice and snug as it should be. So with this one, we're now going to chain three. One, two, three. And then we are going to slip stitch in the first stitch of the previous row. So that was that standing double crochet there. So when I work into that, I'm going to get under that front loop right there. And then I'm going to make sure to grab that tail end and put it over my hook. Cause that sort of acts as the second loop at the top of that stitch. So I just want to gently pull through there and make a slip stitch. We're going to have a lot of loops traveling up the sides of our shawl, but we're going to cover those when we make our edging. So don't worry about those. After that, we're ready to begin the actual stitches of row four, if you will. So we start with a chain one. We single crochet in the first stitch. Then we work a front post treble crochet in the stitch below the next stitch. So let's look at that. Here is our next stitch. And that is the stitch right there in the middle that it is worked into. So that's the stitch we want to work around for our front post treble crochet. To make a front post treble crochet, we're going to yarn over twice because it's a treble. Make sure too that as you do those yarn overs, that first loop on your hook, the one coming out of the previous stitch doesn't open up too much. Sometimes that loop wants to pull up and that's how we end up with kind of wonky treble crochets sometimes. So we wanna look again, there's that next stitch, there's the stitch it's worked into. So we're going to come in on one side of that post from the front, bring our hook all the way around that post into the back, We've only got a couple stitches here, so I can take a little minute to find that space. There we go. So we've gone from one side around the back, come out on the other. We now yarn over, pull that loop up behind the post, give it a little tug so it's nice and clear there. Yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And with that, we have finished the treble. Don't worry, we'll be seeing lots more of those. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, We've worked a post stitch in front of this stitch, so we're not going to work into it. This one, even though we didn't really work into it at all, is considered worked. So we want to move to the next stitch to make our next single crochet. Get that through, there we go. And then single crochet in the last stitch. When you make the single crochet and front post treble crochet rows, those are rows we will not be increasing on. We only increase on the rows that are double crochet. However, we're going to be using this color for the next row as well. This is what it should look like at the end of row four. So since we're using the same color, we can look at our instructions and see we're going to turn. So for row five, here we are working on the wrong side of our shawl. We can tell because there's no front post treble crochets to see now. So we begin row five with the chainless starting double crochet and also note, Here's that stitch marker we put along the side. This is our increase side. So we start with that chainless starting double, or again, whatever chain three double crochet substitute you like. And since it's a double crochet row and we're on our increase side, we're going to add another double crochet right to that first stitch. There we are. After that, we simply double crochet in each remaining stitch across. So at the end of row five, you should have a total of five stitches. Don't end up working back into that slip stitch. It's a really easy mistake to make. So if you find that that's a problem for you, as you make those single crochet rows from this side, go ahead and put a stitch marker in that first single crochet, and that'll always help you to finish off in the right spot for the next row. At the end of row five, we poulade and we do not turn. So I'm gonna pull up that loop and secure it but now we're going to be working from the same side, which is easy to see because that is where our hook from the, or rather our loop from the other color is ready and waiting for us. So to begin row six, we'll need to take out that stitch marker and set it aside and put our hook right back in that loop. Oops, I always like to make sure as I put my hook back in that loop that when I pull back down on that, 
the end attached to the skein or the ogo, that that's the portion that moves in front of my hook. That way I know my hook is in there the correct direction. So flip back to the direction we're supposed to be going here on the wrong side of our work. And we begin row six with chain three again. One, two, three. We're going to be doing these chain threes to let us hop up to that next row. After that, just as before, we slip stitch in the first stitch of the previous row. You'll remember when we did this when we switched colors before. There we go. And now we're ready to crochet. We're going to start, this is our increased side, so we have a chainless starting double crochet and a double crochet both in that first stitch. So we'll get our chainless starting double crochet in there. And then a double crochet in the same stitch. After that, it's just as easy as the rest of our double crochet rows. We simply double crochet all the way across. Since we had five stitches in the previous row and we added another stitch here at the beginning of this row, you should have a total of six stitches. If you find as you approach that last stitch there, it wants to pull open a little bit because that active loop is still going, just give it a little tug and it should pull that loop back to the correct size. And kind of hold on to that as you work into that last stitch if you need to. There we go. So now we have our six stitches for row six. And when we're working with this pink color or our A2 color, um, whatever the color is that we're not doing our post stitches in, it's always just one row at a time of that color. So we know we're going to pull up our loop and drop it. And we need to turn to get our first color loop back where we need it for row seven. So now that we've got our hook back in our first color, our A1 color, we know it's time to make a single crochet and front post treble crochet row. So we need to start with our chain three so we can make our jump up to the next row. So we chain three, find that first stitch, and again, give that little loop there a tug if you need to, to help stabilize it a little bit. And simply slip stitch right in there. There we go. And then we start again with a chain one and a single crochet right in that first stitch. To make it easy to come back for the next row, we'll go ahead and mark that first single crochet with our stitch marker so we don't end up trying to work into that slip stitch or turning chain at all. After that, we're going to begin this row a little differently because we want to make sure to offset our front post treble crochets because that's what gives us the offset brick look that's featured in this pattern. So now we are going to single crochet in the next two stitches. One, two, then we front post treble crochet in the stitch below the next stitch. So again, we wanna take the time and see where we're going. There's the next stitch, there's the stitch below the next stitch. And we're going to start seeing a pattern here. On these rows where we've got, where we begin with three single crochets, we're going to have that last front post treble crochet worked around the second to last front post treble, or double crochet rather, two rows below. So there'll always be one more, it'll be that second to last one. So let's go ahead and yarn over twice. Come right on down to that stitch. Go right around it the same way we did before. Yarn over and pull up our loop and just work off those loops two at a time. Then we want to make sure we skip the stitch behind that front post treble, which it should leave us with two single crochets to work into, or rather two single crochets to make in those last two stitches. So there's one. Get under that last one there, and there's two. So that is what your brick row shawl should look like at the end of row seven. Now we're ready for row eight. We're continuing with our first color, so we don't need to pull up a loop and drop, but we are going to need to turn. Row eight also begins the repeat for this section, and really the repeat that will take us through most of this pattern. We're going to start, of course we need to turn, and we're going to be increasing. There's our little stitch marker to remind us. So this is just a double crochet row. We start with a chainless starting double crochet and double crochet in the first stitch because it is our increased side of the row. Pull up a little bit more yarn here from that ogo. You can see how beautifully it just pulls right off that end, nice and tangle free. Go back in that same stitch for our second double crochet. And then simply double crochet on across. We've got that last stitch 
nice and marked for us. So at the end of row eight, you should have a total of seven stitches. Okay, so as you can see, I've worked that last stitch, so I can go ahead and get that stitch marker on out of the way, and I can go ahead and reuse it because it's time to pull up our loop and drop. So I hope you're starting to see our pattern here. We do two rows of color one, and then one row of color two. Two rows of color one, now it's time for a row of color two. So we put our stitch marker in there and we can just follow the written pattern or look at what we're doing. It's on the wrong side, so we're going to need to turn. Then we'll be ready to begin row nine. So now that we've got our hook ready for row nine, we're going to start again with our chain three, so we can travel up the side and slip stitch in that first stitch. There we are. And now we can look at our directions or we can look at our work and see that the far side is now going to be the increase side. So in this first stitch, we simply need a chainless starting double crochet or other double crochet. There we go. And then we're simply going to work our way across until we get to that last stitch. And now since the increase side is where the last stitch is, that's where we'll put two double crochets. We're almost there. Let's see, there's that last double crochet. And there's the chainless starting double crochet. We wanna make sure to get into that as well. There we go. So there's one, and then we just need to put one more in that last stitch. So we have our increase on the correct side. Then of course, we're finished with this color because we only do one stripe at a time with this color. So we can go ahead and secure that loop. And it looks like this loop is waiting and ready for us so we don't need to turn for row 10. So with our hook back in color A1, we're ready to begin another single crochet and front post treble crochet row. We need to chain three so we can travel up the side and slip stitch in the top of that very first stitch of the previous row. There we go. Then we start always with a chain one and single crochet in the first stitch. And I'll go ahead and use my stitch marker in that stitch to make it easier on the next row. Pull up a little bit more yarn for my Ogo here. There we go. And then we look at our pattern. You see down here, the first time we worked one of these single crochet and post stitch rows, we had one stitch, then the post stitch. When we did the next time, we had three single crochets, then the post stitch. We wanna keep offsetting, so we're going back to this scheme. One single crochet, then the front post treble. So we can look at it right here, take a look. There's the next stitch, that's the stitch it's worked into, that's the stitch we want to go around. So we work that one off, make sure we skip the stitch behind it, and now we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches, one, two, three, and if you like to check your work, you can make sure that the center of those three stitches is worked into this post, which is worked into that post, which is worked into the front post treble before. That's how we know everything's lined up just right. After those three single crochets, we're going to do another front post treble crochet, so we yarn over twice, find the next stitch, and come down here. Once again, it's the second to last one right around that stitch, finish off your treble crochet, and every time we finish one of those rows, skip the stitch behind it, there should be two stitches left to make two, a single crochet into each one. One and two. Remember, with these single crochet and post stitch rows, we don't do any increases. However, we're going to work the next row in the next color, so we are going to turn. So as we make row 11, we're going to go ahead and turn, and this is our increase side. If you need to, you can go ahead and kind of move that little indicator up as you go. So it, since it's our increase side, we know it's a double crochet row, we're going to start with that chainless starting double crochet and double crochet in the first stitch. So really, as you've seen, there are two double crochet rows and one single crochet and front post treble crochet row in each sort of repeat, but then those uh, treble crochet and single crochet rows are a little different because we need to offset. And then of course, sometimes we turn, sometimes we don't. 
So really what it ends up being is a six row repeat beginning with row eight and working through row 13. Right now, I'm just continuing to double crochet across. Once again, this is my increased side, so I had two stitches in the first stitch. After that, it's just a double crochet in each stitch until we get to that last stitch. Always easier to find with that stitch marker in there. Oops, there we go. And now we're at the end of row 11. We've worked two rows now with this color, so we know it's time to pull up our loop and switch to the other color. And we can look at our work and see it's already where we need it to be, so we aren't going to turn at the end of row 11. We'll move on to row 12. Row 12 is made with color two of our set, so we're going to start again with our chain three, single crochet in that, or rather slip stitch, excuse me, in that very first stitch. And if you have trouble getting into the tops of your chainless starting double crochets, it can be really helpful to put a stitch marker there as well and just sort of helps you separate out those two loops. There we go. So now we can come back and look. Is this our increase side? It sure is. And this is a double crochet row. All of these um, pink rows or the two rows are double crochet rows. So we're simply going to increase on this side again with the chainless starting double crochet in the first stitch and a double crochet in the first stitch and then double crochet on across. And just as you've seen before, when we get to the end of this row, we'll need to pull up that loop and drop it because we only make one row at a time in this color. So this is what your shawl should look like after row 12. You can see we increased in that first stitch and then worked on across. And now we're of course done with that color. So we'll go ahead and secure that loop. The last row for our repeat is row 13. As you can see, we're going to need to turn to begin it to get our loop in the correct position. So now we're ready for row 13, which is the last row of our repeat. We're back in our first color and we need to chain three so we can travel to the top of the first stitch there of the previous row. So I'm gonna pull those loops out of the way again here a little bit so I can slip stitch right on in there. Now this is going to be, of course, a single crochet row. So we start with a chain one and single crochet in the first stitch. And I'll go ahead and put my stitch marker right in the top of that first single crochet. There we go. Then I can look at my instructions or I can look at what I did before. The last time we worked a single crochet, front post treble row, I did it in the second stitch. So it's time to go back to the other way. We start with three stitches. So there's one, two, three single crochets. And now we're going to work our front post treble crochet around the stitch below the next stitch. So there's our next stitch, there's the stitch below. And again, we can double check our work and see how it's placed between those other two front post trebles. So we yarn over twice, find that stitch and go on around it. As you can see, as you add more stitches, it actually becomes easier to get around some of these. We've just got a little bit more fabric to work with. You wanna make sure to skip the stitch behind it and single crochet in the next three. One two, three. Time for our last front post treble for this row. Yarn over twice, find the next stitch and the stitch below it. Once again, it's the second to last one. Another great way just to make sure you've landed in the right spot. And then finally, we know we're in the right spot when we skip the stitch behind it and we've got two single crochets that we can make in those last two stitches. So there's one and two. And that is how you make row 13, which finishes our repeat. So for section one, rows 14 through 61 will be repeats of rows eight through 13. So you just go back to the instructions for eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, eight, nine, 10, et cetera, et cetera, until you get through row 61. We have one more row after that before we break these colors and move on to section two, which is a row eight repeat. So we know that's made with the same color we look here and see, are we on our increase side? We sure are. So as we turn and our increase side is now on this side, we know that we make a chainless starting double crochet and double crochet in the first stitch. And then we simply continue to double crochet all the rest of the way across this row. So I'll see you as soon as we get done double crocheting across for the last row here of section one. 
So now I've finished another eight row repeat, which in our little sample here is going to represent row 62. After this row, we are done with both of our colors from our first skein. So we're going to be breaking both of those yarns. However, we're not going to turn before we join the next one. So we're just going to go ahead and carefully lay it down like this. And then we can simply go ahead and break both of those ends, leaving enough room to weave in later. I want to be careful because I didn't put a stitch marker in that one here. I didn't secure it. There we go. But now it's cut. I can just go ahead and pull that end right on through. And then we can actually do that same thing with our other color here. Just pull that yarn end right on through. There we go. And now we are ready to begin section two. And now we're ready to add section two with our second Ogo or our next two colors or whatever color scheme you've come up with. I've got section one all prepped here. My ends are secured. I've got a stitch marker here. I've moved the one up that indicates the increase side. And I've got one in the top of that chainless starting double crochet. So it's really easy to find. Again, we want to start this one from the wrong side. We want to be on the wrong side of our shawl here. So we should not see any of those front post treble crochets. So we're going to take B1, so the first color of our next section, and we're going to make a standing half double crochet in the very first stitch. We're going to introduce one little new stitch here. So we're going to, again, secure that yarn end in our fingers here and yarn over twice. And then we pick up and go right into that first stitch. I'll yarn over and pull up a loop. And then because it's a half double crochet, I'm going to gently pull through all three of those loops just like so. And for this one, I definitely like to secure the top here with a stitch marker. So I'll go into the top of that one right there and make sure that tail end is included. Close that up and we're ready to continue. This is going to be a row again where we do not actually increase. So at the end of row 62, you should have had 43 stitches. At the beginning of row one for section two, you are going to again have 43 stitches. So we've got our standing half double crochet in the first stitch. Then we're going to front loop only double crochet until we get to the last stitch and then half double crochet in that last stitch as well. So we need to look at the tops of the stitches. When you look at the top of your crochet stitch, you can see there are two loops, the two loops of the V. If we look at them this way, they sort of form a V. The front loop is the loop that's always closest to you, the crocheter. The back loop is the loop that's always furthest away. It doesn't matter how we're looking at our fabric, whether it's from the wrong side or the right, it's always relative to you, the crocheter. So let's go ahead and begin. We start with a yarn over and we go under just the front loop of that very next stitch. So we want our hook to come right up in the center of that V. After that, it's just a standard double crochet. So let's make a couple more. I'm going to yarn over, go right just under that front loop there and double crochet. There's one and there's another, just like so. Takes a little getting used to. You just need to carefully get your hook right in there. What this does is on the right side of our fabric, get that little end out of the way there so you can see, it leaves a really nice line right there. It just creates a really nice separation between the two sections. So we want to continue to front loop only, double crochet all the way across until we get to that last stitch where we'll work a half double crochet through both of those loops. Okay, so we're at that very last stitch. You can see there's my little knot, there's the top of our last stitch. So now I want to go ahead and go under both of those loops. Of course, now my hook wants to make it a front loop only. Let's get in there. There we go. And work our final half double crochet. There. And that is what should look like at the end of section two, row one. We are now going to go ahead and pull up our loop and secure it with our stitch marker here. Then we are going to go ahead and turn before we join the second color for this section. Now we're ready to pull in our second color for the second section, B2. We're going to be joining with our standing double crochet in the first stitch. You can see we've turned, we should now be working from the right side of our fabric. So I'll secure those ends, yarn over twice, 
and go right into that first stitch there. Get in there really carefully. Alrighty, finish that first standing double crochet. And then after that, we're simply going to double crochet in each stitch across until we get to the last stitch where it will be our increase side. We can see our little stitch marker right there. So we'll want to work two double crochets in the very last stitch of row two of section two. Now again, this is a two color. So this is the color we only work one row at a time in. You can see I just double crocheted across till I got to that last stitch where I made two. So we're going to go ahead and pull up our loop and secure it. And then we want to look and see, we don't need to turn because our contrast color, or our first color rather, B1 is right there ready and waiting for us. So with row three, we're ready to start jumping back into that same pattern that we saw before. We wanna be working from the right side and this is our, our one color, our B1. So we know that the next row is going to be a row of single crochet and front post treble crochets. So we want to yarn over and chain three there, slip stitch in that first stitch. Go ahead and get that stitch marker out of the way if it wants to be in the way. And then as always, we chain one and single crochet right back in that first stitch. So I'll put my stitch marker right in there. There we go. And now we need to look at our previous rows or our pattern. We can look and see the last time we made front post treble crochets, we started with three single crochets. So we know now we're going to start with a row where there's just one single crochet. Time to make our first front post treble. We yarn over twice, find the next stitch and the stitch below and work right around it. Then we continue our repeat. Make sure that little end stays out of the way there. We don't want to accidentally work over our ends at all because we're going to want them in the right place to pick them up. So make sure those are all out of the way. Skip the stitch behind it. Single crochet in the next three. One, two, three. Pull up a little bit more yarn from this Ogo here. I'm using some leftovers from the actual shawl itself for this demo today. Then we find the next stitch and the stitch below. Yarn over twice. Go right around that one. And again, you can see that should be landing right in between the two from below. Skip the stitch behind it there. Single crochet the next three. One, two, three. Oops, make sure we don't accidentally go through that loop. Pull everything out of the way. There we go. One more front post treble for this row. Next stitch, stitch below it, second to last. We know we're in the right spot. Get right around that post there. And then finally, skip the stitch behind it. We've got those two stitches left. Each get a single crochet. One and, whoops, two. So after this, really, we go back to the pattern we've been following all along. We'll end up making a total of 28 rows in section two. Start counting with that first row you made here when you switched to that other color into the row in the front loop only. Our last row in section two will be a repeat from the wrong side where we worked until it's the wrong side because it's our increase side with our first color, two double crochets in the first stitch and double crochet all the way across. That's the row we want to finish on when we finish section two and get ready for section three. Section three will be in the second video, part two. And that's how to crochet part one of the brick row shawl. You will find the other parts appearing here on the Moogly YouTube channel over the course of September, 2022. So if you're watching after that date, be sure to check the description so you can jump right to the next video. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.